All right. Whoa. I am uh, back in the back in the wood uh, from the woods once again, and I just watched Alone, season eight, episode nine. Um, due to a lot of internet criticism, I've reverted back to my cardboard uh, notes. Uh, that and because I can't find any paper in my house. Um, but I guess we'll just get on with the episode. Um, it starts out, once again, I think this seems to be a pattern. It starts out with Biko. Um, so, so will I. And he is talking about how he's cold and his shelter is indeed pretty airy and open, uh, big. Um, it is, uh, I've noticed on several seasons of Alone, often you'll see uh, shelters where you can see air, light, from the inside and of course if you can see light from the inside and wind can blow right through your shelter so you want to make sure that all the cracks are chinked properly uh, especially in the north in British Columbia far north than that you have so much nice moss to chink with uh, you definitely need to chink your shelter you shouldn't be able to see any light from inside of course if you can the air is just going to be moving through and sucking any heat that you try to make right out and so he when the need comes he does chink his shelter it's never gives you a good look at his ceiling or how big it is it looks like a big shelter which of course is hard to heat but um but you don't really get a tour of it or anything <laughs> so um let's see he uh he gets into building a bunch of crafts and that's one of the things out there you got to stay busy you got to stay productive so you don't get too bored and he starts by making a uh a net which he and both Coulter later i believe seem to make it you know use it without a shuttle so they just drape the drape the paracord over and tie it together in a series of overhand knots and that works um uh when i made mine i used a net needle and a shuttle because it I, I like it better it's a little faster less messy but if you look at Biko's net when it's done and it uh, looks real nice. So, um, and you know, then he also carves the uh, best spoon of his life, <laughs> which is, you know, and, and makes a sheath for his knife and does all this stuff. And uh, yeah, it's your goal is to be productive out there all the time and make all your activities productive. But honestly, it's a little impossible. Uh, so at times you're just gonna have to do things that keep you entertained and keep your mind uh, active and that's what he's doing and that's really good. Um, so just figuring out crafts, keeping himself busy, especially with his strategy where he's just trying not to burn a lot of calories. That becomes incredibly important because it's a serious mental game doing what he's doing. Um, but he's going strong. He's like, he's uh, 45, 50 days in in this season, not spending a lot of calories, not having like many big successes, which is hard. You know, it's not, it's hard to be out there fishing all the time, doing all this stuff, and not actually having those highs that you get when you have success. So uh, he's just trucking through, plugging along, using, like he said, the bear strategy. <laughs> um, that it's just I'm sure it can be pretty tough mentally but he obviously is uh, up to the challenge so far and man when he takes his shirt off at the end there he's still got more weight on him 50 days in than <laughs> than a lot of us ever had so he's looking really good um that is uh yeah that's serious you, you see that and you see well that's a pretty solid strategy especially in those low resource areas so I don't know you know what if he can stay healthy and stay mentally strong it's he's gonna be hard to beat he has a lot of weight still um, he's lost 68 pounds he might be able to do that again <laughs> I don't know um, and then we see Coulter next uh, he's got his little cool little cave shelter. That thing's probably a little easier to heat. But um, he mentions like walking around in the snow and not seeing any game sign. 
something you don't see from any of the contestants, any of their hunting. And uh, you don't want to assume they're not hunting. I would just imagine that the show hasn't shown it. Obviously, Coulter mentions it. He's been out scouting around, hasn't found any sign. He definitely would now that it's winter and there's tracks. So that's disappointing. Um, <clears throat> So they're, they're really just sticking to him, Coulter, and Coulter's boat in that whole uh, storyline, regardless of the other things he might be trying. Um, and honestly, the boat is an excellent strategy up there. Uh, who knew there'd be so few large fish hitting their lines and stuff when they're fishing, but, uh, but you can't go wrong with that strategy. It's uh, Well, you can if you tip over or something, but it's a solid strategy for where they're at. Um, he does find a dead bird full of parasitic worms, which is pretty gnarly, so I'm sure he cooks the heck out of that, eats it, and gets his first protein in who knows how long. Um, and he also makes a shuttleless gill net, um, and he, you know, you can kind of see what he does for floats, which is what they would do traditionally. The Avenki is like rolled up birch bark along the top. I think that's what it looked like Coulter was doing. That floats the top of your net. Um, so he's put in a lot of work on his net, on his boat. He's been out there, I'm sure, a ton, trying fish traps, trying all the stuff. Um, and it's just, it is awesome when <laughs> on this season, or this episode, the best part of the episode, in my opinion, when he pulls up two giant fish after all that work. It's, that's so awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, there's no saying that's luck, you know, <laughs> talk about hard earned fish, man. So congratulations, Coulter. I really hope you get a lot more of them because, uh, you know, you're doing what you can. You're leaning into that boat net fishing strategy pretty heavily, which on a place with very little game is, uh, one of your best bets. So you know so far it's hardly panned out but finally this episode episode nine after he's lost probably you know who knows how many pounds he finally gets a couple big fish and he's calm about it he realizes that's not a final victory for him by any means he's gonna have to keep that up especially you know he's already depleted all his reserves basically uh so but how nice is that those are my favorite parts again of the show when somebody finally has hard-earned success, which, uh, yeah, those are definitely fit in there. Um, uh, and, you know, we get to see everybody's satisfaction when they finally finish their nets, which, uh, that's a, that's a, that's gratifying in and of itself. Big job complete that always has hope of getting food. Um, so with trout, I think they have something like, uh, 500 calories per pound and so you need about you want 3,000 calories a day you need about what is that six pounds of fish a day so that gives you an idea of how much you have to continue to catch on this scarce lake it's still going to be hard but you wouldn't know that until you got there so <laughs> so there they are trucking away um we got Teresa now who what a, she's got a beautiful fur coat she's whipped up. Uh, it looks really warm. Uh, she's probably been sleeping on it. What a great, great item she made. Um, and we get another fish basket, which this season has been, uh, they love to show the fish baskets. <laughs> which initially I thought, well, maybe someone has success. They're showing them so much, but it wasn't this episode. You know, we have another, um, episode where she puts it out and gets smashed by that terrible shoreline with the huge waves uh you know a fish basket she saw those little fish swimming around on the shore it's not a bad idea for those little fish especially if you can bait it with something maybe guts from that fish she found on the shore uh but it was not to be so uh she nixes the fishing completely and is just gonna see what she can do on plant food up there which is which is uh, going to be definitely a downhill slide, but she actually still looks pretty healthy. Like I don't, I wouldn't say she looks gaunt or anything. So um, she could have the right metabolism for it. But yeah, you definitely have a timer going once you're on a strictly plant food diet. So uh, 
wishing her the best, even with her, you know, we see her spill her mushroom soup, no big deal. She picked it all back up, reboiled it. Um, and then just as a side note, she's got a beautiful shelter. I, uh, yeah, really impressed with her shelter. It seems to be serving her well. She's got it ventilated and smoke free, which is awesome. So that's been cool to see. Uh, wish you could kind of see a little more of it, but you get the idea watching the show. And finally we have Clay who makes his big land, has, by the way, yeah, a big landing net. He's stuffing it full of moss at the start to build his archery target. And, uh, yeah, he was ready to catch some monsters out there. <laughs> um, but he gets a chance at a duck, and as good of a shot as he is, just isn't quite able to hit it. Uh, close call, though. I, I never got close at all to the ducks that were swimming out at the, on the lake at Great Slave Lake. They, uh, but uh, you're out to spend enough time out there, you get those opportunities. Um, He's got a cool little creative idea for getting his net out in the water, uh, his little fishing line, uh, his, you know, like dryer line, laundry line technique. Same thing I used for the ice fishing. But, uh, man, you know, even watching Biko put his net out there or Clay put his out there, you're just like, man, that is a shallow shoreline. And, yeah, you wouldn't be... I wouldn't be holding my breath. I think Clay realizes that, but you, you gotta do what you gotta do. This is where the boat comes in really handy. And when I went on alone, I took, or you know, one of my things was that I was wondering if I should take was the gill net, but because I expected potentially a sh shoreline like we're seeing here, I just think there's no way we're gonna be catching giant fish right off the shore. I would also need to build a boat. Great Slave Lake could be similar to what we're seeing here with those big storms, so. I opted to go a different route and make my gill net while I was out there and deploy it under the ice. But uh, but yeah, on our season, who knew there would be giant lake trout swimming right next to shore. Uh, Nathan on my season figured that out and landed a lot of big ones. If I'd have been on the next season, I definitely would have taken a gill net or made one right away and uh, put it right off the shore. But that's not the case on Chilco Lake. It's more as you would expect without these huge fish right on the shore um, and yeah it ends up being a tough tough go for clay all that work all that effort and it's not working so he gets kind of frustrated with that but uh, they kind of give him the old editing treatment there where they talked about his son and not wanting them to give up and then and then he gives up on his net thing of course <laughs> There's a difference between giving up and knowing when something's not working and moving a different direction. So uh, I think that's what he's doing. And uh, anyway, that's episode nine. It was a good episode as well, especially with the uh, with Coulter finally landing those fish. Man, good job. I think imagine if you had the what you need is the strategy of uh, the hunter clay with a boat and a net and a little extra body weight like uh, Biko and there you have a really <laughs> tough uh, com competitor but uh, as it is we're seeing them really uh, each strategy compete along with Teresa's uh, great attitude and she's still having fun out there 50 days into starvation <laughs> so good for her um, and we'll see what happens next week so probably next Sunday I'll try to do another one of these I'm back up in the woods tomorrow so uh, thanks guys and thanks for watching cheers Whoa.